Expert insight, clear analysis, strategy in action. Welcome to the CEO to CEO podcast, featuring the world's top CEOs. The podcast will welcome honest conversations meant to challenge traditional ways of thinking from fellow global industry leaders. This podcast will also explore the intricate world of M&A from the insider's perspective. M&A is a big deal, one in which you can drive the future of your business, your industry, and even the trajectory of the marketplace. This podcast is hosted by Kevin Campbell, CEO of Synity. Synity is a global enterprise data solution provider specializing in data operations and data transformation. Kevin Campbell is a global champion in data and has served as the former group chief executive officer at Accenture and COO of Oscar Insurance Corporation. In this episode, we sit down with Kevin Jones, CEO of Rackspace Technology. Kevin Jones is an accomplished business leader with 30 years of technology services experience and has led global mergers, acquisitions, and divestitures with an impeccable record for also leading business transformations. Welcome to this week's CEO to CEO podcast. And today I'm very excited and pleased to have on uh, Kevin Jones from Rackspace. Uh, Kevin's the CEO at Rackspace and we're excited to have you on, Kevin. Well, thanks Kevin for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Um, how about if you, we start with you telling us a little bit about your career journey and uh, how you ended up at uh, CEO of, uh, of Rackspace. You've done EDS, HP, Dell, uh, HPE, DXC, and MV Transport along the way. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, happy to. So I've been in the technology industry for over 30 years. You mentioned some of the companies that uh, I work for. Um, you know, Most of my time, Kevin, has been spent in change, some type of change, either a turnaround, integration, spinoffs, you know, go privates or IPOs. Uh, most of my career has been in the United States. I did spend six years in the UK, and then I lived two years in Asia when I was running the Asia Pacific and Japan business for HP services. Uh, right before I joined Rackspace Technology, as you mentioned, um, I had a terrific experience as CEO of MV Transportation. It was, it was awesome. It was a company in a completely different industry. And we were actually a customer of Rackspace, and Rackspace moved us from our aging data centers kind of all over the world to a multi-cloud environment. And Rackspace did a great job for us. They were amazing, right? We moved to the cloud successfully, team had all its deadlines, and we saved a lot of money. So it was great when, you know, roughly 19, 20 months ago, I got a call to join as the Rackspace technology CEO. So, you know, I knew the company from competing uh, against it, um, for you know a couple of decades, so I jumped at the chance, and it's been a blast. I mean, by far and away the best company and team I've ever been a part of, and uh, you know, wake up every day excited to work with the best technologists in the industry. If you look back on your career, uh, pick out a couple of highlights or key learning points for yourself. You know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was eleven or twelve years ago, Kevin. I saw a quote. Right, I was reading. Um, uh, in my living room, and I saw this quote that changed my life. And this quote was, if you have a 10-year strategic plan, why not accomplish it in six months? Um, and to me, that was just really, really very empowering because you know I thought about it. And if you look at the actual amount of time that most actions take, it's not really that much, right? The problem is that a lot of people have too many priorities. They're given too many priorities. And just human nature kind of causes work to fill the elapsed time given, right? So, you know, for example, if, uh, you know, if we give someone, you know, a month to do something almost without fail, right? Almost every time it'll get done on the 31st day, right? It's just how things work. So, so that was something that was kind of a life changer for me. Um, and also, I'm just a huge believer in focus, right? When I came to, to Rackspace, for example, the company had 10 corporate priorities. Now, I don't know about you, Kevin, but I cannot do 10 things at one time, right? Um, so we reduced our focus to three. And we said, look, we are going to be just the best in the world at these three things. We're going to stop work on everything else. So we focused relentlessly. You know, we set up really quick sprint type timeframes, went fast, and the results were pretty good, right? You know, just over a year later, got customer satisfaction at an all time high. We've had five record sales quarters and, and we took the company public. Not bad. Uh, you know, 
in a, uh, what, 18, 19 months. That's a lot to accomplish. Um, maybe step back a second and just, you know, for people who might not be as familiar as I am uh, at, with Rackspace, tell us just a little bit about Rackspace, what's your mission and purpose, um, and then maybe tell us a little bit about how you differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Yeah, happy to. Thanks. So our mission at Rackspace Technology is embrace technology, empower customers, and deliver the future. And what I mean by embracing technology is that we're always going to be developing and exploring new technologies and mastering, you know, the most important ones for our customers. Empower our customers means we help our customers achieve their business outcomes, working with them, you know, every step of the way. And deliver the future is exactly what we do for so many customers. And we really do it faster than they can do it themselves. And our rackers rally around this, right? Because, you know, they understand it and it's what we, we do every day. So that's our mission. In terms of how we're different, right? How we're different from our competitors, it's pretty interesting, Kevin. You know, we're in a unique spot, right? We're on our way to becoming the leading pure play multi-cloud provider. So we've got a significant head start on our competition. And we've got really, I would say, five major points of differentiation. The first is automation. So we've got the highest automation in the industry. And customers love that, right? Because it really helps with quality, pace, and um, and this is because of our software, right? We've got the software called Rackspace Fabric. It's really the platform of the business. Um, it's how we operate the company. Hundreds of thousands of customers are on it. Um, so you kind of think of Rackspace more as a software-enabled business. We're not a heavy labor business like Kevin, you and I have managed a lot of these companies in the past. This is really much more of a software-enabled company. The third thing is fanatical customer experience. So, you know, this is uh, deep in the DNA of the company, you know, um, going over and above the call of duty to make sure customers are happy. Fourth is we're an end to end player for cloud. So, you know, we do the upfront consulting, um, you know, technology roadmaps. We do the middle part of a cloud engagement, all the integration and migration work. And then finally, we do the managed services at the end. So, you know, the end-to-end -end nature of our service is really important for customers so that we maintain continuity and knowledge of their environment. And then finally, scale. We've got 120,000 customers in over 120 countries and growing fast. So those are really our major differentiators. And I've heard uh, uh, referred to your employees referred to as rackers. Uh, and I know there's a fair amount of passion amongst your rackers. What as CEO, what do you think you need to focus on to get right so that they can be successful along with the software and automation that you have? Yeah, it's a great question. We love our rackers. They are passionate and, um, and incredibly technically gifted amongst, amongst other things. And we have a lot of fun. Um, but for me, Kevin, the most important thing I think uh, one has to get right as a CEO is your people and their priorities, right? I do think strategy is important. I think long-term goals are important, but the most important thing to me is what our 7,000 rackers are working on and what they're focused on. Have to have the right people working on the right things at the right time. And what we did to help here, Kevin, is we deployed a management system. So our management system is very focused and it includes an intense cadence of meetings, all of our KPIs and performance indicators to make sure we can make decisions, allocate resources accordingly. And this discipline is vital, right? Particularly when you're transforming and when you're going through change. I mean, left unchecked, you know, my view is people work on what they think is important. And it's crucial, right, that we all stay aligned on what the business priorities are. So for me, it's priorities. You went public, as you mentioned recently. Congratulations on that. That's a huge feat. How is it being a public company? It's great. It's great. I love it. And I know, Kevin, you've spent um, you know, most of your career in, in managing very large organizations and public companies. So I, I love it. I mean, I'm very proud, you know, like you said, and thank you for saying that. You know, I'm proud of what the, the team's accomplished um, with the IPO, particularly to do it during a pandemic. I mean, I think it's just um, you know, a, great, um, a, a great accomplishment. You know, we're in a great market. Team's performing well. So we're really pleased to be able to do that. You know, we just announced a sensational third quarter with the highest revenue in the history of the company, highest sales 
in the history of the company, and we raised guidance across the board for uh, for 2020. So we're in a fantastic market. Tectonic shift in the industry to multi cloud. Our team's executing well. So the future is you know really really bright for us. Well, and doing that in the middle of a pandemic, as you pointed out, is uh, is quite amazing. Uh, speaking of the of the pandemic. What do you think the the impact it's had on your business or maybe even the adoption of cloud? Because everybody wants or asks me all the time. So I'd like to get from you, what's the impact of the adoption of the cloud based on the pandemic? Yeah, the pandemic was, uh, it was a pretty interesting turn of events, right? Because if you look kind of look at our, our transformation journey, we really wanted to go public. And then we ran into the pandemic in February, March. So, um, you know, just to take a step back here, I actually have personal experience with pandemics. You know, I lived in Asia 10 years ago when H1N1 was raging, right, around, around the region. I actually contracted the disease when I was there. So it was, you know, it's not the most fun I'd ever had, right, uh, with H1N1, but I got, it, I got over it in about a week. It wasn't a, a huge deal. Um, but I did learn a lot, right? I learned a lot about how pandemics kind of move across countries, the effects of quarantining. By the way, I never thought I would ever use that knowledge again. Just thought it was one of these bad things that happened to me. Um, but you fast forward 10 years later, and I don't know how you felt, Kevin, but kind of December in January when we saw COVID-19 start to pop up, my antenna was up, right, um, because of my previous experience. So we started testing our processes and our systems in January and February. So I knew the most important thing we had to do was protect our rackers, right? That was my number one priority. Um, so if we had to flip the switch and go to work from home, we had to make sure that we could continue to operate the company and our 120,000 customers could continue to keep running. So we tested, tested, tested. Uh, March 9th, we started working from home, went off without a hitch seamlessly, no disruption to any customers, no operational issues. It was absolutely brilliant. And since then, what we've seen from the pandemic is, you know, first of all, our productivity has increased. Mm -hmm. um, our customer satisfaction has increased. You've seen our sales pipeline and sales results, right, continue to accelerate. And really, this is because, you know, what the pandemic did is it just reinforced customers need to save money. Mm -hmm. Cloud is great for that, right? Uh, customers, in a lot of cases, had to scale way up in some industries or way down in other industries. Cloud's great for that. And then also, some customers' business were irrevocably changed, right? You know, brick and mortar in some cases wasn't working anymore. So they had to pivot to new business models. Multi-cloud is great for that. So, so all of those things together really helped us, um, you know, just continue to accelerate the momentum that we already had. What, uh, what's your status of kind of return to office around the world uh, today? Yeah, great question. So, um, so look, we've extended, you know, work from home to uh, the end of March, at least the end of March, 2021. Now we have opened a few satellite offices, 10% capacity, um, just for some countries where, you know, the, the pandemic is currently under better control. Um, but we're going to monitor this very closely and we're only going to open if it's, if it's really, really safe and we've got the right protocols in place. So we'll be really, really quite careful here. There's no reason for us to rush into it and we have to protect um, our rackers. Let's talk about, uh, about M&A. You've had a lot of experience with M&A over the course of, your, uh, course of your career. What role does M&A play in the, uh, the, in the past for uh, Rackspace and what role might it play in the future? Well, Look, um, I'll definitely talk about M&A, and I would love your view too, Kevin. You are an M&A genius, right? I know from what you did with Accenture and other businesses, um, you've probably forgotten more about this than I'll ever know. Um, but look, M&A to us is you know, a core part of our strategy, right? You know, We look for deals where one plus one can equal three. You know, if you look at what we've done since our LBO four years ago, you know, we've acquired four companies. We just acquired another one. And it's really kind of helped revolutionize our service offerings. So, you know, when we buy a company, we add it to our platform. You know, we love the benefits we get from the people that come over, the capabilities, the customers. And if you look at the deals that we've done, they've helped us enter some new markets, create new revenue streams, kind of get ahead of our competition. So, you know, M&A for us, um, you know, we're looking at 
uh, for acquisitions, companies that are growing, right, um, that can have an accelerated impact on our blended revenue growth. That's important. And also, you know, we like acquiring businesses because they bring in exciting talent. For example, this Anika acquisition that we did just over a year ago was spectacular, right? Incredibly successful. And now what we've done is we've got an integration playbook. We've got an integration center of excellence that we use for Anika. We're now using it for Bright Skies, the acquisition we did in Central Europe a few weeks ago, and we'll use it for future acquisitions. When you're looking for an acquisition candidate, what do you think is the, the look for the, the perfect candidate? Um, if there's such a thing out there, or, or maybe what are the things that you say, hey, if, if this exists, it's not going to work. How do, you, how do you spend not too much time looking? Because that's part of the, you know, the trick for you and I is to make sure you spend time on it, but not too much time. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, you know, first of all, if you kind of look at our go to market strategy, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do and is uh, trying to do is move the tip of the spear more to professional services, right? The advisory consultancy, um, a lot of things you're very familiar with. Uh, so if we can find additional professional services capability, that's fantastic. Um, if we can go and find targets that are that have technologies where the puck is going, right? Like Internet of Things, right? Uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, data, edge. Uh, that's really a huge plus. Applications, right? Application modernization, growth. Obviously, we talked about that. Geographic expansion is something else, right? You know, as multi-cloud continues to accelerate all over the world, geographic expansion. You know, if we can acquire companies that kind of get us into different countries. That's awesome. And then finally, partnerships. So, you know, our business model here at Rackspace Technology really treasures our partnerships. We're very, they're very strategic to us. So if there's uh, an acquisition target that's got particular relationships and a part of the ecosystem that we like, then, you know, that's, that's another important factor. And what about, you know, we you already talked about, you know, the importance of culture and the strong culture of your Rackers um, how do you how do you get uh, guess or at least make an educated um, thought that uh, somebody's going to be able to fit into that culture and be additive to it? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, look, we spend a lot of time with the targets, and um, you know, we uh, we try to be really, really open and transparent about our culture because I do think it's the number one most important thing to make. An acquisition successful. I don't know if you agree, Kevin, um, but um, I, I really think this is critical. So we invite them in. Uh, we have lots of conversations and um, because we've got a very unique culture at Rackspace, right? We are fanatical. It's an extremely passionate workforce, extraordinarily technical. We invent things, right? We're also quirky and we have a lot of fun. So um, that usually makes us a really attractive acquirer. So typically, we found this a strength. You know, we haven't found any um, potential um, uh, companies that we were looking to buy. Say, wow, I don't really like that culture. Everybody adores it so far, anyway. So, um, but we have to make sure, right, that the two cultures are going to match because yeah. we're very entrepreneurial here. And if we've got a company that maybe isn't as entrepreneurial, then that's probably not not a great match. The other thing that's important is that the people that we bring over, right? Um, that they understand what great career opportunities they could have. Because to me, it's very important to retain the executives from the, the companies that we're acquiring. You know, these are incredible people, entrepreneurs, ambitious people that have built businesses a lot of times from scratch. And we want to make sure that they feel like they've got a great place where um, they can be entrepreneurial and where they can continue to be technical if that's what they want to do as well. And they can thrive in that environment. Exciting. I got to imagine, though, uh, from everything I've heard uh, about Rackspace, you guys have a, an exciting culture, and I would imagine that a lot of people are excited to join. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a real plus, a selling point for you in the process. Let's switch to one of my favorite topics, which is data. And uh, what role does data play in the Rackspace go-to-market? Oh, it's huge, right? And, this, and I just think we're, we're scratching the surface, and this is why you're in such a great business, Kevin. You know, um, we're big believers in data, you know, incredibly, right? As you know, 90% of the world's data has been created just in the last couple of years, but only 1% or less is analyzed. So enormous data out there that can be mined, can be used for insights. So 
In terms of internally, I'll start there first, and then maybe we can talk about how we interact with customers in it. But internally, I'm all about data, right? I'm a financial guy. I really like a lot of data. Um, in the management system that I talked about earlier, uh, data is very important so we can make fact-based decisions, right? And we can make sure that we hold ourselves accountable for our goals. So data analytics, very important. One of the positions that I created when I came to Rackspace was chief data officer. We got an amazing executive in this role. His team is kind of using all the data in ways we never had before. We've got propensity models all over the place now, propensity for customers to buy more, propensity for customers to churn or be unhappy, lots of other data as well as, you know, just the basic KPIs that we use to run the company. Um, so, so yeah, we love data. We love um, to use it to operate the business. And I actually think it's been one of the keys to making our management system so successful. So externally, um, how do you take that, that knowledge you've learned internally and now help your customers, you know, turn data into insights uh, for their businesses? Yeah, great question. So, so if you just think about our offerings, um, just to, to tell you how important data is to us, we've only got four offerings in the whole company. Multi-cloud is one uh, offering, that's private and public cloud, application security and data. So it's one of four. Yeah. Um, and really what we help our customers with is we help you know, the customers, decision makers kind of analyze the data, leverage the data using lots of toolkits, including uh, AI and, you know, machine learning. And, you know, the data services that we offer our customers, data modernization, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And by the way, that's a great service offering for us because we've had so much success internally, right? Being, you know, having the highest automation in the industry. Yeah. Analytics and business insights is another offering. We have data strategy and governance and then data management. That's great. Let, let's wrap up with uh, two of the favorite questions I like to ask all the CEOs we have on, which is um, what, what's your thought on mentoring and uh, what, what ha have mentors done from you over the, uh, the years? Mentors have been critical for me, critically important. I am a huge believer in the power of mentors and their impact on developing leaders. And, you know, my advice for people when adopting mentors is to be proactive, right? Speak up. You know, personally, for the last 30 years, how I've approached this is I've never given my mentors a chance to say no. <laughs> I just adopted them, right? I just did it. Just started meeting with them, you know, asking their advice, being relentless, and, you know, it evolved. Um, and sometimes mentors, for me anyway, sometimes mentors know they're my mentors and sometimes they have no idea or they might not even know me. So a lot of times I'll just copy people. Um, I'll look at what they do. I'll study it if they're good. Right. And and what I've found over the years is there's very few people who've got everything. Right. There's usually bits of people that are really, really strong. So what I've tried to do over the years is find the best of each executive. So, for example, the best kind of financial CEO that I ever knew was the HP CEO, Mark Hurd, right? He was unbelievable. Um, the best operational CEO I ever knew was Ron Rittenmeyer of EDS. Uh, the best customer-oriented CEO I ever knew was Meg Whitman of you know, eBay and HPE. And still to me, to this day, the best technological strategist um, that I know is Michael Dell. Uh, and then there's dozens and dozens of other folks all over the world that, you know, I've really just tried to take the best of what they're great at and try to adopt some version of that uh, for myself. I, I think that take the best and leave the rest is uh, one of the things I've tried to do, too. Last thing is uh, career advice. What's the best career advice you've ever gotten? So, Kevin, the best career advice I ever received was, you know, basically what to look for when picking leaders, right? When you pick your leadership team, like what are the most important characteristics to look for? Because as you know, right, it's really all about the team. If you've got a great team, you can do anything, right? You can change the world. So, you know, I have really 11 kind of major uh, leadership characteristics that, you know, sent around to the company and that we all kind of talk about. I'll talk about the top three, which to me are 75% of the job. So, if you can do these top three, then to me, that's a huge gate that you've passed at 75% of the job. And also 
completely controllable, completely controllable. So, you know, you don't need any special talent. You don't have to be born with, you know, born a genius or anything like that. Like anybody can do this. So number one, the first thing I look for when choosing a leader is will this person take responsibility, right? Will they take responsibility? Or will they be the type of leader that when the going gets tough, they'll make excuses, right? They'll point at others, blame others. That to me is the most important thing. So I've got somebody who's going to take responsibility, then I know they've got a great chance of taking the hill. And by the way, I can usually tell within two or three minutes of meeting someone if they're the type of person that will take responsibility or not. So that's number one. That's by far to me the most important. The second is execution. Again, like responsibility, completely controllable. It still baffles me why this is so difficult to get right. If you look at you know, the, the global workforce as a whole, um, not at rack space, we crush it with execution, but in general. So execution to me is just very simply, you know, can the person execute or you need to follow up to get things done? Just very simply. And you know, you've got those people, you know, the people that you assign stuff to, you know, it's automatic, right? It's going in, it's going to happen. And then, you know, the folks that you're not sure, right? And then you got to kind of maybe you're going to have to remember to follow up with them. So those types of folks don't usually do as well um, in my organizations as the folks that can execute. Again, completely controllable. It's all about doing what you say you're going to do, and it builds trust over time. Um, and, uh, you know, this is probably, Kevin, why they say, you know, strategy is nice, but execution is worship, right? It's really, really quite important, I think. And then the last one for me is pace. You know, will the person move at lightning speed? right? And I'm unforgiving about wanting to go fast, lightning speed. And as you know, Kevin, in our industries, this is how we were brought up, right? If we didn't move fast, then our companies would fall behind and eventually die, right? So we, we were trained to this as we, uh, as we kind of grew up in these companies, particularly in technology. If you're not moving fast, um, it's gonna, you're going to have a struggle. But if you can, you can get ahead of the competition. And it's just much more exciting place to work, I think, if you're going fast. I agree. I always tell my team that management's job is to be impatient, right? Because uh, we've, we've got a specific period of time and we got to move quickly. So Kevin, thanks for being on. Really enjoyed talking with you today. And I think you gave a lot of great advice for our audience. So thanks for being on with us. And everybody, thanks for joining us on this episode of CEO to CEO podcast. And join us next time when we'll talk to another great CEO. Thank you for joining the CEO to CEO podcast. Join us next time as we uncover data strategies to support mergers, acquisitions, and divestitures with the world's top CEOs.